Come on, give them your praise. Do what you do. Do what you do. Come on, lift your hands. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 While you're on your feet, let's hurry to the word of the Lord. Mark the ninth chapter. Mark the ninth chapter, the 24th verse. Amen. We give God praise for Grace Bible Church. Thank you so much for it leading us into this space and this place right here where we can sense the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's here. Amen. Amen. We ought to respond to that. He's here. Amen. And when he's here, he's, he's meeting your needs even now. Even now, whatever you came in with, you may as well lay it down at the altar. He's here. Amen. He can handle whatever you brought in. He can handle it. We thank you for your presence. Mark 9, 24 says, Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Hey, for a subject on today, I want to talk about the remedy for doubt. Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, neighbor. Pastor, Jason Pastor Jason is going to preach about the remedy for doubt. for doubt. You may have your seats. Amen. The remedy for doubt. It was German philosopher Paul Tillich who said, doubt isn't the opposite of faith. It is an element of faith. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is an element of faith. If we are all honest, we all at some point uh, or sometimes often struggle with doubt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doubt, doubt is a struggle because maybe you're like me. I need my faith. Yes. Amen. Let me try this out. I said I need my faith. Yes. And so, so doubt becomes a struggle because I'm trying to hold on to what I have. Yes. Because my faith gives me confidence to try again. My faith gives me peace in the time of waiting. Amen. Anybody been in a time of waiting and you needed some peace to carry you through? Faith, faith gives me hope in the midst of trouble. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What that means is even before I got it, I got it. So, so that even if I'm waiting on it, I can still have confidence. I can still smile. I can still praise because my faith tells me I already got it. And so I need my faith when I'm waiting. I need my faith when it hasn't come through yet. I need my faith to keep me sane when everything else is crazy. I need my faith and doubt only threatens to rob me of the blessing of faith. If I, if I were to be honest on today, there have been times where I have been so frustrated uh, by doubt because uh, the doubt came in the midst of my faith. And I just wanted to tell doubt to shut up. Y'all know what it means for doubt to come in the midst of your faith. You're trying to hold on. You're trying to hold on. You're trying to believe. And then doubt comes in and says, it's not going to work out. Things are not going to go the way you want it to go. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm trying to believe. Shut up. I don't need to hear. I don't need to hear the doubt. I don't need to hear anything that goes against my faith. And it is in our text on today that we see an awesome picture of this struggle between doubt and faith. It's contained in this picture. Also contained in this picture is the remedy for doubt. But before we go there, y'all know how we roll. I can't give you uh, the content unless we look at the context because we won't respect the content if we don't look at the context. It's, it's in the ninth chapter of Mark where we see this beautiful scene where Jesus goes up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Mount, he goes up this mountain, only takes three of his disciples, takes Peter, James, and John. There was his inner circle. He had 12 disciples, but he had three that was in his inner circle. He had three that he would reveal special things to. Amen. It was on the Mount of Transfiguration where he took Peter, James, and John. He also took them to the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. Listen, don't get mad when there are certain people that's close 
closer to you than other people. Amen. 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 We're only human. We can't be close to everybody. Amen. Even Jesus had an inner circle. Amen. He had those three. He's up on the mountain with them. Y'all know how we come to church and we always say it is good for us to be there. That came from the scripture. That came from Peter being up on that mountain. And Jesus transformed himself right in front of them. And Peter said, it's good for us to be here. They didn't want to come down at that mountain. Jesus showed them something on a whole nother level, but it was time to come down. And when they came down off the mountain they ran into uh, some conflict that gets us to the circumference of our text right at the 14th 14th verse of that ninth chapter it says when they came to the other disciples they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them as soon as all the people saw Jesus this is a good good, a good way to see Jesus they were overwhelmed with wonder that's how if we encounter Jesus we should be overwhelmed with wonder they ran to greet him what what are you arguing with them about he asked I pause because divinity is asking questions Amen. Amen. Omniscience is asking questions. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, A a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Yeah, we're talking about the remedy for doubt. This man tried to get his problem fixed. He had some level of faith, but when he brought his son to the disciples, they weren't able to fix his problem. Uh, What do I see? I see in the text, I see faith blockers. Yeah. When I look at this man, I see see faith blockers. What's one of those faith blockers? What hinders, I believe, uh, is persistent problems. Mm. I look at this man as a picture because as we go further down in the text, I haven't read it yet, but Jesus asks him another question. He says, how long has this been happening to your son? The man says, this has been happening since his childhood. Could you imagine being a parent of this child that keeps going into convulsions? He keeps going and throwing himself into the fire and into the water and throwing it and and foaming at the mouth, gnashing his teeth. You don't know when it's going to happen. So as you live, you're always on high alert. One Wondering if my child is going to be okay or not. Persistent problem, persistent problem, persistent problem. I believe that not only is this man in the text knows what it has, what it is to go through persistent problems, but I believe there's some people in the house on today to know what it is to have persistent problems and how it hinders your faith. You didn't prayed and prayed and prayed. You didn't prayed and prayed and prayed. You didn't prayed and prayed and prayed, and nothing has changed. It's hard to hold on to your faith in the midst of persistent problems Uh, not only not only do us persistent problems block your faith uh, but unsuccessful attempts to solve problems also hinder your faith can you imagine this man he goes to Jesus was trying to find Jesus ran into the disciples tried to get his problem solved and the disciples were not able to do it this can hinder your faith and maybe you're like me and I I know this is conjecture maybe I said Jesus at best because the text don't say it but I believe this is not the man's first attempt to fix the problem Amen. Uh, Maybe he was like the woman with the issue of blood that tried doctor after doctor. Amen. I just believe that this man, this wasn't his first attempt to solve his son's problem. And he's been trying to do it since childhood. Unsuccessful attempt after unsuccessful attempt will lead you to a place of doubt. It will lead you to a place that your faith is hindered. I wonder, am I talking to somebody on today that knows what it is that you didn't try this? You didn't try that. You didn't try this. You say, you won't know what? I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to try it another way. You didn't try all these ways but you would tell the truth and say it's beginning to make me doubt it's beginning to hinder my faith yeah 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 these these are faith blockers and I I bring them up today because some sometimes we just need to know that we're not in this thing by ourselves and so I wonder can I get uh, maybe two people to tell the truth shame the devil and say listen I have not been let down from heaven I don't have it all together every once in a while there's some doubt that creeps into my faith that there is humanity in my Christianity and when I have to go through all the time I can't hold on all the time somebody else just wave your hand and say you're not by yourself in the in the midst of what you have been going through it's 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 hard to hold on to to your faith 
Look, look at the 20th verse. Look at the 20th verse. It says, so they brought him. Jesus said, bring him to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He, he fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus, Jesus asked. <laughs> I hope y'all follow me. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has, been, has he been like this? How long has he been like this? There again is divinity asking questions. Amen. Y'all already know that whenever divinity asks questions, he's not looking for information. He's trying to drop revelation. Whenever divinity asks questions, there is no ambiguity, amen, with divinity. Amen. He knows exactly what's going on, but yet he pulls up alongside this guy and asks him this question how long has this been happening uh, he says from childhood he answered it has often thrown him into fire or, or the water to kill him look at this man trying to deal with this situation trying to save his son's life all the time but if you can do anything he said take pity on us and help us I see the picture and privilege of prayer where, where did you see prayer in the text, Pastor Jason? I seen this man talking to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> that, that, that's prayer. Amen. I seen this man talking to Jesus. That's prayer. And I love what Jesus did. He already knows how long this boy has been dealing with this. He knows all about the situation, but Jesus is so sweet that he pulls up alongside this man and says, how long has this been happening? Because he knows something about humanity that every once in a while, we just need to get it out. Every once in a while, we just need to say what's going on with us. Amen. That, that when we get it out of us, there's, it's therapeutic that there is healing when I'm able to tell somebody about what I'm going through. And Jesus is so sweet that he gives him this divine opportunity to begin able to begin to have some therapy, to begin to heal, to begin to get it out where somebody lends an ear and can understand him. What I love about Jesus and what I love about us is that this man does not own is not the only exclusive person that has the ear of Jesus. I wish I had a witness in here. Uh, he, he was able to talk to Jesus, but we are able to talk to Jesus, and he wants to hear all about your problems. He wants to hear all about your struggles. And what I love about talking to Jesus is that when I take it to him, everybody else don't have to hear about it. When I take it to him, I don't have to worry about him going to gossip about it. When I take it to him, listen, I don't even have to explain it. Amen. Listen, when I go to you, I got to tell you the context. I got to tell you when it happened. I got to tell you how it made me feel. But when I just tell Jesus, he already knows what I'm dealing with. He already knows what I'm going through. He already understands what I'm feeling. He sympathizes and he empathizes with me, with me. I, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. That, that there, is, there, is, there is somebody ought to take the privilege and the, uh, uh, the privilege of prayer on this week that whenever you begin to doubt, you ought to just begin to tell Jesus. Somebody said, you know, you thought you was complaining, but Jesus want to hear it. Amen. Yeah. Jesus want to hear what you're going through. I dare you to take it to him and find some healing. Just in taking it to Jesus, he ain't even answered your question yet. He haven't even solved your problem yet, but that's healing when you take it to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody, anybody, anybody thankful for the privilege of prayer? Amen. Amen. We ain't shout like I think we should shout. Amen. Amen. It was the old psalmist that said, the Lord, the Lord, the, I love the Lord. He, he heard my cry and he pitied every groan. Amen. Amen. The old song said, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Amen. Amen. I love this part of that old song. He said, his line ain't never busy. Tell him what you want. Look at the 23rd verse. He says, Jesus, Jesus. I got to go back to 22 for y'all to really feel it. It says, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, if, 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 if you can do, if you can do anything, if you can do anything. I love Jesus in this text because Jesus will check you. You know that, right? The man says, if you can do anything, take pity on us. Jesus says, if you can. <laughs> I, I, lo I love you. If, if, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. If you can, I love Jesus. But I see a, a merciful rebuke in the text. I see, I see a merciful rebuke. Uh, 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 Jesus was trying to let this man, there's nothing wrong with my ability, but there's something wrong with the possibility. 
because because it's only possible if you believe amen yeah 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 there's nothing wrong with my ability as long as you believe it's possible for you I love Jesus popping his collar right here if if, if you if you can amen uh, this is the biggest flex in probably all the Bible if, if you can amen I'm the one that opened blinded eyes if if you can, amen. I'm the man, I'm the one that made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. If you can, I'm the, I'm the one that fed 5,000 with two fists and five loaves of bread. If you can, I'm the one that opened blind Bartimaeus' eyes. If, if you can, amen. And listen, if you're wondering if he can, I, I dare you to think back on one Friday over 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. He died. Hallelujah. But he got himself back up. Destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up. If you, if you, if you can. Somebody don't need the Bible to find that out. Somebody don't need the Bible to find that out. All you got to do is look back over your life. Amen. And you can hear Jesus checking you. You talking, you don't think he going to make a way. He don't think he going to come through. But I dare you to look back over your life. Amen. And Jesus is like, you remember I did that? If, if I can. If I can. I opened doors for you. I made a way for you. I was your bridge over troubled water. If, if you can. Somebody ought to know and shout. I know he can. Amen. I know, I know, I know, I know he can. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all ought to hear Jesus checking you this week. Amen. Hallelujah. If you ever wonder, he's like, if, if you can. Immediately, immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I see the paradox of faith. That in the midst of my faith, there can be some doubt. Those two things don't go together. It's a paradox. Uh, uh, I see the paradox of faith that because in the midst of this story, in the midst of this story, we definitely see some faith out of this man. Yeah, yeah this man brought his son to Jesus. That's faith. Hallelujah. He, even after the disciples failed, he still went to Jesus. Yeah. That's faith. Amen. When, when he brought his son to Jesus, his son started convulsing and throwing himself on the ground he still talked to jesus yeah. that's faith amen <laughs> amen I, I and and i just believe that there are a few people here on today that that still know that you got faith yeah. so don't look at me crazy because i waved my hand about to doubt <laughs> don't don't look at me crazy because i said i doubt too because i still have faith amen yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do believe. How do I know that you believe on today? I come to encourage your faith because you made it to church today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still, you after everything that you're going through, wave your hand if you're going through something. Amen. I believe that there, there's everybody is going through something in their life, but you made it here today to church. Amen. That took faith to say, you know what? I don't feel like it. I don't even know if I want to go. I'm tired of going through what I've been going through, but I'm going to press my way to worship. That takes that takes faith. So whatever the devil done tried to lie to you about, see what he'll do is he'll take that little bit of doubt and say, you don't believe at all. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad that you didn't just say that you had faith, but you acted on that faith and you came to worship this morning. Don't you sleep on the faith that you have. You, you got some faith. This man has some faith. Amen. He had some doubt he was working through, but he had some faith. And the next thing I see is the reality of the reality of doubt. Here, here is something crazy. Here is something crazy. Can you can there actually be doubt if you have no faith? That 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 doubt can only happen if faith exists. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I just I just heard. That's why we ought to confuse the devil. That whenever I start to doubt, amen. He said, well, I couldn't be doubting if I didn't believe in the first place. You should tell him, you, you thought you had me, devil, amen. But you just reminded me that I do have faith. <laughs> I honestly and realistically, faith and doubt always coexist because there is always a deficiency in my faith. Yeah, yeah, that, my faith is not absolute. <laughs> I, I'm not perfect. My faith is not perfect. Amen. There's always a deficiency in my faith. But, but here's the good news. Even with small faith, big things can happen. Amen. I'm going to rewind it and say it one more time. I thought I was at I'm fell in love Christian church. I said even with small faith, big things can happen. 
Uh, Y'all don't believe me. Let me put some Bible on it. In the other story, uh, the parallel story in Matthew's gospel, uh, the disciples pulled Jesus to the side after they could not cast out this demon. And they said, why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus said, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. I say it again. Amen. Even with small faith, big things can happen. Yeah. But here's the caveat. Here's the caveat. Uh, We ought not be satisfied with small faith. Yeah, yeah. If you look over the New Testament, whenever whenever Jesus rebuked a believer, it was most often about their faith. Y'all remember Peter? Y'all remember Peter with all that faith he had? See, I don't want to beat up Peter because I ain't never walked on water. Amen. Jesus wasn't the only one that walked on water. Peter walked on water. So I'm not going to beat Peter up. Peter had enough faith to get his foot outside that boat and begin to walk on water. But when the winds and the waves came, he began to doubt. Jesus reached down and called him and said, oh, you a little faith. Why did you doubt? Amen. Whenever Jesus rebukes us, it's because of the smallness of our faith. And so what the text is teaching us is that even though small, that big things can happen with small faith, we ought not settle for small faith. Amen. Don't settle for this level of faith. Hallelujah. Don't allow doubt to linger. Y'all hear what I said? Don't allow doubt to linger because if you want de- the devil to get in anywhere, that's where he slips in. If we allow doubt to linger, he'll start to lean in on that doubt. Amen. And make you doubt more. Amen. Don't allow that doubt to remain. James says it to us this way. He says when, when he asks, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. We have to move from faith to faith. Amen. We cannot stay where we are. So the question becomes, Y'all such a good class. The question becomes, what is the remedy for doubt? This father, this father in the text does something that is theologically sound, yet practically counterintuitive. (laughs) It's theologically sound. I love him because he says, I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe, help my unbelief. He's theologically sound. Because he realizes that the source of faith is not from himself. Let me put some Bible on it. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, we're saved by grace through faith. And that, not of ourselves, is the gift of God. So even the faith that I have has been given to me by God. Let me put some more scripture on it. Romans 12 and 3 says, For I say through uh, the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Yeah, faith is not something that you conjure up. Faith is not the little engine that could, that I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. The source of our faith comes from God. He's theologically sound when he says, help my unbelief. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just really gave y'all the answer. I just gave y'all the answer. Uh, How do we, how do we, what's the remedy uh, for our doubt? Is to ask God for help in your faith. That's the answer, but the answer seems a little bit counterintuitive. It seems a little bit, counter, a little bit uh, uh, against common sense. It seems counterintuitive that, that if, if Nisha, if, if, I, if I owe you $20 and you come to me and say, hey, pastor, I need that $20 back. And I say, Nisha, could you give me $20 so I can give you the $20 back? That's counterintuitive. Amen. That don't make sense, right? Right? But and we're asking, we're supposed to put our faith in God. And when we put our faith in God, we gotta say, hey God, <laughs> let me get some faith so I can put some faith in you. 
is counterintuitive, and so it seems like we should not be asking him for it, but the text teaches us that this man was theologically sound, amen, even though it seems counterintuitive that we got to ask him for the help that we need with our faith. For our faith, our source of our faith is through God. We got to have faith in him, and we have to ask him for more faith. Mark, Mark 9, 24 says, immediately, this is New King James Version. Y'all just heard it already, but I like this version. It says, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears. This was deep. I do believe. I sure enough believe. But there's some doubt lingering. Help my unbelief. Somebody ought to holler, help. Yeah, yeah, help my unbelief. My bills have been just coming back to back. I don't know how I'm going to pay it. I'm beginning to doubt God. Help my unbelief. God, God, my marriage is going crazy. We've been trying to work through it, but I'm starting to believe it's not going to work out. I've been praying and praying and praying. God, I've been trying to work through it. I've been trying to work on myself, but I'm beginning to doubt. Somebody ought to shout help. Amen. 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 My, my, my physical body just been tripping. I, I can't get my blood pressure down. My, my diabetes is going crazy. I don't th think I'm going to ever get back to a place where I feel like myself again. I'm starting to doubt it. I've been praying, but, but Lord, Lord, help. Somebody, somebody ought to shout, help. I need, I need your help. I need, I need your help. I've been praying. It's been a, a long time, but I've been waiting so long that it's hard to hold on. Somebody ought to shout, help. help. I'm almost out your way. Y'all been a good crowd. Uh, uh, he asked the man for help. He asked the man for help. <laughs> he asked Jesus for help. The text says, at the 25th verse, when Jesus saw the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. Uh, you deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. Uh, this is what I want you to see. The boy looked, even though you can't see it on the screen, I'll read it. <laughs> The boy looked so much like a corpse. He, he, he looked so much like a corpse that, that, that many said he's dead. Uh, after you ask God for help, first believe he's going to do it for you. He's going to give you the faith that you need to make it to the next level. I just feel like pausing right there. I feel that what felt like that was a word. Amen. Amen. Where you are right now, the faith that you have is not enough. Priest Pastor Jason, amen. The reason why you haven't made it to the next level, this is a word for somebody, is because your faith is not enough. You ought to shout to God and ask him for help because you need another level of faith for where God is taking you to. Somebody ought to shout, help. But I'm ending by cutting the devil off at the pass. Because once he helps you, once you get to that next level, there's going to be some things that lie to you. When, 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 before Miss Shelley, Miss Shelley used to work at Bridge of Hope with me before she passed away, there was a saying that she used to say that I still hold on to. She used to tell me all the time, your eyes lie. <laughs> she, she, says, she says your eyes lie did y'all see what happened in the text he asked God for more faith God did it for him and then the, the spirit came out of the boy the text says the boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead <laughs> see, see once God moves for you it may seem like ain't nothing changed uh, I just said your eyes lie I just said your eyes lie. <laughs> yeah. When God does it for you, it may seem like it hasn't changed, but your eyes lie. Can I say it real old school and real churchy? Look to your neighbor and say, it ain't what it look like. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It ain't, it ain't what it look like. It ain't what it look like. I, I thought my marriage was going to change by now, but it ain't what it looked like. I thought my money would have changed by now, but it ain't what it looked like. Look to another neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't what it look like. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to give you an assignment, amen. I want to give you an assignment that when it starts to look bad, after you have put all your faith in, you ought to just start to praise God, amen. 
confuse the enemy. Amen. And the enemy like, why are they praising? Because it ain't what it look like. <laughs> it ain't what it look like. Hallelujah. When your bank account look low, you ought to just. <laughs> Hallelujah. When, you, when you're sick in your body, you ought to still just lift your hand. I, I can't shout like I want to. My body hurting, but I still. If I can't say a word, I just wave. I just wave my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm out your way. But if you ever need, amen, an example of it ain't what it looked like, just look back over 2,000 years ago. I'm gone. I'm gone. But one Friday, my Jesus died on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. He died. He surely did die. The enemy thought he won. Y'all help me preach. But it looked like it was not dead. I'm he rose again with all power in his hand. Somebody ought to shout. It ain't what it looked like. Because one Sunday morning, he got up. He got up with all power. All power. Such three people. I ain't did it yet. Such three people. And say, neighbor, it ain't what it looked like. Hold on. Don't you give up. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Who wouldn't serve a guy like that? I just feel like praising him for a moment here. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I know he's all right. If you know he's all right, shout. Yeah. Shout. Yeah. He's all right. He's all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 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 I, I quit. I quit. I'm stopping. I'm stopping, but I dare you to praise him. Hallelujah. For everything that's not looking right. Y'all didn't praise him. I said, I dare you to praise him for everything that's not looking right. Everything that's not feeling right. Everything that's not going right. I dare you to give God praise. Confuse the enemy. This is how I fight my battles. I give him praise. Praise is what I do even when I'm going through. I learned to praise him in the good and in the bad. I praise him. I praise him whether happy or sad. I praise him in all. I wish I could get somebody to praise him in all. You're going through, because praise is, praise is what I do. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him praise. I praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. What would have happened, hallelujah, if you gave him a help praise? <laughs> what would happen if you give him a help praise? My faith ain't been there. <laughs> but I, in my praise, I'm asking you for help. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm adding the faith that I do have <laughs> to my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say one, two, three, pray. I gotta pray. I gotta praise and I gotta get it out. I gotta pray. I gotta pray. I gotta praise and I gotta get it out. I gotta pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a praise. Come on, lift your hand. Give him glory. Hallelujah. I give you glory. I give you glory. 
Hallelujah. 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 There's an old song that says, I almost let go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you made it to church today. Hallelujah. The devil is a lie. He thought he had you. Hallelujah. But you got away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say, hold on to your faith, neighbor. Don't you give up. Woo. Would y'all do me a favor? I know I talk to y'all and tell y'all to touch y'all neighbor all the time. But it's ministry in this. Go hug three people and tell them, don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. And hold on to your faith. What's this scene to go? Hey, can you go to A flat? Go to A flat. I have the faith that can move the unmovable, expect the incredible, receive the impossible. Obey that can conquer anything. I have the faith that can move the unmovable, expect the incredible, receive the impossible. Oh, faith that can conquer anything. Faith to move the unmovable. Faith to fight the unbeatable. of the church are open. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is a good day to put your faith in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your faith in him today. He died for you. He rose on the third day. He yet lives. Forgiveness 
is available for you today. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've gone through, no matter, no matter what it looks like, he can forgive you and he will welcome you in. He will welcome you in. He desires you. He wants you. The doors of the church are open to you on today. Perhaps there's somebody else here. You already know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, but you do not have a church home. The doors of the church are open to you on today. We would love to have you as a member of Unfailing Love Christian Church. If you're online, you can text love to 484-848. If you're in the sanctuary and you just don't have the confidence to walk up here, amen, you can text love to 484-848. Join the church on today. Join the church on today. Amen. Put your faith in him today. Put your faith in him today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what? Sometimes you got to declare, I have the faith. Hallelujah. Your flesh will lie to you. The devil will lie to you. Sometimes you got to declare, I have the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see that there is room, but there are none. Somebody give God praise. Come on, you got another praise in you. Is he good enough to give him another praise? Yeah. Amen. 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 It is offering time in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God praise for the opportunity to worship him through our giving. Amen. Thank you for your giving. Amen. We had, we bought an additional air conditioner, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. One of the old ones went out. So the new one that we bought, we had to install that in, that, in its place. But it feel okay in here today. Amen. Y'all just sweating because y'all praising. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So we thank God that on yesterday we had another AC installed and was able to do that. And that's because of your giving. Amen. And so we thank you for your giving. Uh, I just want to just mention this. Uh, I know I didn't put it in announcements. Kevin might have grabbed it. But tomorrow we are starting the day shelter. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so my mom gave me the idea because, you know, I want to make sure that we're all invested in everything that we're doing, not just our money, but our time, our talent, and our treasure, because it takes all of us to be able to impact the community. So if you have any towels or any washcloths uh, that you're not using anymore, amen, <laughs> you could donate them to the church. If you just want to pick up a few from the store, you, you got it like that, pick, up a, pick us up a good 50, amen, Th thank you. Who got it? Who was that? No. <laughs> Amen. But we, we need things like that. We need toiletries. We need, we need um, toothbrushes, toothpaste. We love, we love the travel sizes. Amen. Uh, to give to those persons that's going to be coming in. Somebody say, what, does day, what is the day shelter? Let me say that. So we are going to be open from 9 to 1, Monday through Thursday. People can come in. They can take a shower. There's some work going on right now where the guys over there hooking up the washing machine. We got one washing machine, one dryer. I got a commitment for another washing machine and a dryer that we're going to install. When we get finished, we'll have three. Amen. We'll have a washer and dryer upstairs, wash, two washer and dryers downstairs. There's a shower downstairs. People can come in, take a shower, get their clothes washed, amen, get toiletry items, get lunch, get coffee, get out of the elements, amen, amen. All of that is afforded because of your giving, amen, that we're here in this community and we're able to make an impact, amen. So thank you. We ask for your continued support, amen. We need your continued support. So please pay attention to, to the announcements as we give Cash App, dollar sign ULCC, website uh, www.ulccstl.org. Or you, if you want to give in the sanctuary and you want to give cash or you want to give a check, uh, just wave your hand. And when I first touch team, they'll bring you an envelope. Amen. God bless you. Please pay attention to the announcements. 